the number of moles of electrons is 7.09 now the third part of the question number of moles of electrons that passed through the cell okay so we are given the current 20 amperes we are given the time 10 hours so we, are, we first we will calculate q which is the charge passed through the cell so 20 into 10 but we have to convert the number of hours in seconds so into 60 will give us minutes and into 60 again will give us seconds so this will be q now when i do this on my calculator i get 720,000 coulombs so 720,000 coulombs now this is the total charge passed and I know that the number of moles of electrons is equal to Q over F where Q is 720,000 in this case and F is 96,500 as we know it so 720,000 over 96,500 coulomb per mole so when I do this on my calculator, I get 7.46. So two, three significant figures. So this is the number of moles of electrons that pass through the cell. But this is the number of electrons that was needed to produce the copper. So there is a difference. And now the, the next part will tell us why we have this difference. Hence calculate the percentage of the current through the cell that has been wasted in dissolving the impurities at the anode so the amount we can see it's 7.46 minus 7.09 this is the amount that has not been producing the copper and hence has been wasted over the total amount that was passed which was 7.46 so when I do this on my calculator what I get is uh, also this is a percentage sorry so this is a percentage so we'll have to multiply this by 100 we cannot forget to multiply by 100 because that's the rule of percentages. So multiply this by 100 is equal to, so when I do this on my calculator, I get around 5.02%. So because I've used all the accurate values, that's why I keep reminding you, use three significant figures in the answers, but Whenever you are doing some calculation, use the accurate values which were on your calculator, the full calculator display. That's what you have to use. So we are done with this question as well. Now let's move to the next question. State the relationship between the Faraday constant, the charge on the electron E and the Avogadro constant, uh, Avogadro number, sorry, L. Same thing, but as it's written over here. So we know this is F is equal to L E. Okay. If the charge on the electron, the atomic mass and the valency of copper are known, the value of the Avogadro number can be determined experimentally. This is done by passing a known current for a known time through a copper electrolysis cell and weighing the mass of copper deposited onto the cathode. Draw a label diagram of suitable apparatus for carrying out this experiment. Label the following power supply with plus and minus anode, cathode and ammeter. State the composition of the electrolyte. So let's first make the power supply. So this is different from basic electrolysis. In this case, uh, we have impure copper on the, on the anode and pure copper on the cathode. So in this case, we are just purifying copper. So a different type of cell is, a different type of apparatus is used, setup is used. So this is the electrolyte. Now, this is the cathode. You have to label the cathode clearly stated in the question. And even if it's not stated, we will still label it because it creates a good impression on the examiner. This is the anode. This is the ammeter. And this is the electrolyte, which we have to state the composition of the electrolyte. So this will be CuSO4. 
Now, why I've used copper sulfate solution, aqueous? Because the, the anode is copper, 